right, we're moving on to the third lesson. It's not the third video, but the third lesson. Let's open up our PDF file. And as you can see, we're on lesson three, C position. Dotted notes. <clears throat> So we're still doing our, our C position, C, D, E, F, G, C, D, E, F, G in the right and left hand. Uh, but we're looking at rhythm a little bit. <clears throat> we're going to have some dots next to these half notes, and we'll discuss what that does. But first, before we jump into this, you should have already done, or you can pause the video and do this now, your repertoire. Your lesson one and your lesson two. Play through those one time is all you need. If you'd like to do it twice, it'd be okay if you played it, played it twice, but, but not too much. Mostly we just want to play through it. Say it and play it. Say the note names out loud. It's very important that we really get that down. Also, review the, uh, <clears throat> the note check thing where we did the two black keys and the three blacks where you just pick a note at random and be able to tell what it is. Okay? And play all the B's, all the A's, all the C's on the piano, that thing. Uh, that exercise is very helpful if, if you're still not there on that yet. You need to, to be doing that as well. <clears throat> and uh, Alright, so you got that out of the way. That should take a few minutes. Now, we will get to this lesson three. And we start out, I'm going to go ahead and, and zoom in here. I just wanted to show you the whole three lines there, or four lines. Actually, let's zoom in a little more. And uh, you can really see what's going on there. Alright, uh, so we start off with, hopefully you know that's a C note by now, that you've been doing your flashcards, right? <clears throat> So, uh, and this could be maybe not even the third day for you. Maybe this is the fourth or the fifth day of lessons. That's fine. You don't have to do a video every day. You can take one video, and that video may last you several days. That's, that's totally fine for that. But don't think you have to be doing a new video every day. You can do the same one for a few days in a row. So you have to kind of be your own judge there. All right, we know a half note gets two counts, okay? So a half note... gets two counts. We know that. Alright, what a dot does to a note, that little dot that's next to the C, see that? It's going to make it bigger. It's going to make it last longer. We take half its value and add it to itself. Now remember that. We're going to do that for any dotted note that we might have. Take half of its value and add it to itself. Half of two is one. So, 1 plus 2 is 3. So a dotted, where's our dot? <laughs> a dotted half note is 1 plus 2 equals 3. Now, a dotted half note gets 3 counts. You don't have to know the math behind it. You don't really have to know it. It's nice to know it because that's how we get, that's how we arrive at 3 counts. But the main point is a dotted half note will get 3 counts. All right, so I'm going to write one, two, three on that one. And then the quarter note here gets count four. I did not put a time signature here. I'll start doing that eventually, but we assume four, four here, four, four time signature. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> so we're going to count one, two, three, four. All right. And again, the rhythm is something that I want you to understand and to do it when you're able. But if you have to pause because you're figuring out a note, that's okay. Go ahead and take that pause. You know, know that a half note gets two counts and a quarter note gets one, but don't beat yourself up, up about it. Okay, we're still going to move on, even if you have pauses in there. All right, one, two, three, four. And then we have a half note right here, okay? So this one doesn't get three. It only gets two because uh, it's just a regular half note. One, two, and this half note will get counts three and count four. So I'll say one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Remember each measure 
I'm counting to four. This measure will also count to four, but we have four quarter notes, so they just one, two, three, four. All right. <clears throat> now, when we get here, this measure also has four counts, but the first two are in the right hand, and the second two counts are in the left hand. One, two, three, four. Okay? So those are the counts. There, then we have another dotted half note right here, and that'd be one, two, three, and then count four would be there, and uh, so forth. These little black boxes here, rectangles, this is called a whole rest. This right here, it's just telling you that the left hand is resting four counts while the right hand is playing four counts. Of course it is. You would play, you know, it's just something to fill in. Uh, the blank there to, to fill up the time, okay? So we know that the right hand has four counts, and we're not really paying attention to the left because that's kind of taken care of as we count the right, okay? It's something that's automatically done. Take a look at this one, though. The, the whole rest hangs. This is called a half rest, and rest just means you don't play anything. Rest means you have to allow for the time of those counts, but you're not going to actually play anything. Here's a half rest for the left hand. And we actually count it when the right hand's going. You see? We count one, two for that right hand. Well, the left hand's resting during that time, obviously. Okay, so rest is something uh, you have to pay attention to, especially when you, neither hand is playing anything, you've got to count them. But when one hand's doing something, you know, and the other hand's not doing anything, I don't really, really pay a whole lot of attention to that as a, as a sight reader. Okay, so this is a half rest, this is a whole rest. <clears throat> now remember our terms. What's this called? Treble clef. What's this? Bass clef. And our staff, which has four, line, four spaces and five lines, right? Treble staff, bass staff. This is a brace. These are bar lines. Uh, we have measures. We can count measures, all right? We should be, be able to do all of that. Now let's get to the piece. <clears throat> I'm going to start out in uh, C position, of course, still. This is also a tune that I will play for you after we do our note reading on it. Okay, I'm not going to play it for you yet. I want you to use your ear and your memory to uh, play it. I'm going to do it by reading. You should know that that's a C by now. Okay, so if you want to put a C on that first one, that's fine. Then what do we got here? Touching the bottom line, of course, it's a D. Then we have a note on the bottom line of the treble clef, and of course that's an E. And then the same note, E. Alright, so we'll take that little bit. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Alright, C, D, E, E. If you can play it in rhythm already, fine. If you can't, just take your pauses as you need to. And what do we have here? I'm just going to write this first one. Of course, it's a D because it's underneath, touching underneath the staff. Then what we have here? C. What do we have here? Back to D. What do we have here? E. And then what do we have here? A C. Okay? Now, on the left hand, what do we have right there? What letter is that? We know it's a C, D, E, F, or G. Hopefully, you have a reflex now that that's a G. Did you see that? So, oh, that's a G. G's on my thumb. Okay? So we do G there. <clears throat> on the left hand, the thumb. And that's all the left hand does. Then we go back to the right hand. Begin with a C again. One, two, three. And then we have the D there at the end. So we've got through those notes. Let's scroll up. Now we have this uh, middle line here, or, or the second line at least. All right, we're on treble clef. What note's on the top line? E. And of course we have another E after that. So E, and then another E, and then what do we have here? But a D. And then a middle C, of course, back to D. So D, C, D. Then we have an E there. And then we're going to have a, a middle C after that. Now what is this? This is a whole note. Remember how many counts that gets? It gets the whole measure. That's why it's called a whole note. And we give it one, two, three, four counts for the whole note. It's a C. One, two, three, four. All right, now looking at the left hand. 
<clears throat> we start with, I'll give you a little tip here too. If you have some highlighters, two color highlighters, uh, me and my kids, we use orange and, and yellow, but uh, take a highlighter <clears throat> and highlight the left hand notes, and with the different color, highlight the right hand. I don't know why it works, but it helps you see visually see which hand is coming up. Uh, some people have trouble telling which hand right at first, so if you use a highlighter on those, it works pretty good. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so left hand, the first note we have is what? It's in the second space, right? One, two, the one, two space of the left hand, which makes that a C, which is on the fifth finger. Remember how we number our fingers? One, two, three, four, five, thumb is one. One, two, three, four, five, so the pinky plays the C in C position. Then we're going to go up. And you see that we go up here. But, don't just know that it's up, know that it's a D, because it's on the one, two, three line. It's on the middle line, so it's a D. Okay, so we have C and then D. Moving up a little more to E. Moving up more to F. Okay, so E was on the one, two, three space. F is on the next to the top line, the fourth line. And then we finally get to G, and then another G, and then another G. So G throughout. And the counts are one, two, three, four. On that, three, four. All right. And then we go back to right hand. So this is where the highlighter comes in. If you were highlighting, you'd highlight all this, you know, yellow, and then this would be blue or whatever, orange, and this would be yellow. So you'd see visually, uh, you know, the groups and what to do with them. <clears throat> All right, so what are we starting with here? What's that note on the one-two line? G. Say it and play it. Say it out loud. G. Say the next one. F. Say the next one. E. Say the next one. D. Okay, so G, F, E, D there. And then let's get to the third line. All right, I'm not going to spend so much time on each note because you should be memorizing these now. They should be becoming memorized. Now remember, we're not memorizing this song, this piece of music. We're not memorizing that. We're memorizing the notes, the names of the notes, and what the notes are. So that when we get another piece similar to this one with the same notes, we can play it quickly because we know what the notes are. We haven't memorized that particular piece but we memorize what these notes are so that when they come up in any order, we're ready for them. Okay? What is this? A C, three of those. One, two, three, four. I'm playing with my left hand. I should play with my right hand. One, two, three, four. And then what do we do? We have a skip up here. From a C to what? How high do we go? We go up to a G. One, two, three, four. Now what? If you highlighted this, if you didn't highlight it and you're new at reading music, you might just skip over and not even see that. But if you highlight it and you see down here, we go to the left hand. And what is this note here? It's in the top space. One, two, three, four. What is that? That is a G on the thumb. And another G. And one more G. So one, two, three, four. Now, here's the first time, right here, in this measure, that we play hands together because the notes are lined up on top of each other. You see that? See how these notes line up? So you're going to play them at the same time, okay? <clears throat> so what you're going to do is play this one with this one. So what is this in the right hand? It's on the second line up, so that's a G. Okay, so I'm going to put a G here. All right, what's the left hand note? Well, it's in a space. It's in the top space, so that makes it a G. Ha! Ah, they're both G's. Makes it a little easier to play them at the same time if we know they're the same letter. A G here and a G here. That's called an octave, by the way. Alright, when you play two letters at the same time, they're the same letter. G. Now, we're going to go down in both. Both hands go down. Okay? So that means to the left, of course, on the keyboard. And this is going to be an F because it's in the space right there. Uh, this F is in the, on a line, but it's still an F. See, this is part of what makes uh, reading piano music more difficult than other instruments, because you have to read two clefs, and they're different. An F on the right hand doesn't look 